All right, welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. So today we're going to continue work on this Chrysler Slant 6 Gen Set. Uh, this is the second video in this series uh, concerning the Holly Sniper EFI conversion. If you haven't watched uh, the first uh, video in the series, please consider doing so. I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description. The goal for this video is to get the electronic governor control installed temporarily, uh, get the engine running at its set speed, 1800 RPM, and hook the load bank up to the generator, see how it does. See if we can get the Holly Sniper to fully learn, so to speak. So let's get started. Now there were a lot of questions in the comments section on uh, part one of this series, and I've jotted a few of them down. We're just going to try to touch on them and answer them. Uh, first, why a gasoline gen set? Why did the customer choose a gasoline unit for standby application? Uh, well, first answer to that is, that's what he had. He got this unit pretty cheap, and uh, he wanted to make use of it. Uh, didn't want to spend the money on a diesel, didn't want to find something else. He had this thing, so he wanted to build it. Um, second, with a gasoline unit, you really don't have the issues with light loading that you do with a diesel. Um, no issues with wet stacking, especially on the older mechanical units. Uh, uh, readily available fuel. Uh, gasoline, it, you can pretty much find it anywhere in a you know, hurricane situation or a storm or a power outage. Gasoline is easy, easy to get a hold of. Same with diesel though. Uh, it's quiet. Gasoline units tend to run a lot quieter, I should say, any kind of spark ignition unit tends to be quite a bit quieter than a diesel, a comparative diesel. Uh, gasoline over propane, why didn't you go with a propane unit if you wanted spark ignition? Now, propane is good, it stores for a long time. Transportation can be kind of difficult. You know, you, you can either transport it in large tanks that have to be refilled with special equipment. You can't go, you can't just pour propane from a transport tank into the tank on the unit. So that's why he's got a gasoline gen set. Uh, why did we go for EFI over the carburetor? Why didn't we just stick with a carbureted unit? Um, main answer for that is with the EFI we eliminate issues like uh, the choke sticking or not working, float uh, getting stuck, inlet needle getting stuck, having the carburetor flood, um, leaks, gaskets, seals, vapor lock. That's a pretty uh, pretty common issue with a stationary unit uh, where you don't have a lot of airflow over the engine itself. And better cold starting kind of goes back to the, the choke. Personally, I don't really like carburetors. Uh, they do a job. And they've done a job for a hundred years, so it's not like the technology is bad. Um, and I've got a number of carbureted industrial engines around here. They don't really give me any problems, but they get used fairly often. And if they do give me an issue, it's not a problem for me to figure it out. I don't want the customer to have to deal with that. I think the EFI is the way to go here. Um, so on the EFI, why not use uh, the drive-by-wire or a drive-by-wire function or just have the EFI maintain or control the engine speed. Why am I utilizing a separate governing system? Uh, my main answer for that question is I like the separate governing system. I, I like independent isolated control systems. So you've got your fueling right here. That's all this thing has to do is feed fuel to the engine, watch the combustion products through the oxygen sensor, uh, get, you know, I. I ascertain the engine's status based on its uh, temperature and speed. Just try to provide the most efficient combustion possible. The governor's job is to set the engine speed and maintain it there regardless of the load changes. Having this linkage here provides the operator or the guy in the future that has to troubleshoot it because, yeah, it's going to break down eventually. Everything is, is going to break down. But it's a heck of a lot easier, in my opinion and in my experience, to troubleshoot uh, a system like this if you can isolate it in your mind and, in, and visually as well. So you, you don't know what the gen set's doing. It's cranking, but it's not starting. All right, well, is the governor operating? Is the governor opening the throttle? 
there you go. You can visually see and you can check that off of your, you know, internal troubleshooting checklist. You can see, okay, the governor's operating. Uh, is it unstable? Is it not responding to load very well? Well, grab hold of the throttle and see if it's stable. Bump it around. Make sure the governor works. It's just a personal preference, I guess. Uh, and then uh, why is, there, is the vacuum advance not hooked up on the distributor? A couple people noticed that. The distributor does have uh, a port for a vacuum advance. Answer to that is Typically industrial engines like this don't need vacuum advance. The mechanical is 100% sufficient. Remember this engine really is not even designed to operate at idle. It's stop to 1800 RPM. That's it. So once you get the advance, you know, obviously you have to have the timing retarded to assist in starting. But once you hit 1800 RPM, that's where your timing's at. Now, it may be slightly beneficial to increase the timing as the load increases, but again, you're not increasing the speed. Increasing the load does not increase the engine speed, so the timing doesn't really need to increase that far. We can play around with that a little bit later, maybe in this video, maybe in the next video. Um, the initial timing on this is set at 10 degrees before top dead center. I am curious to see what the mechanical advance brings it to when we're at 1800 RPM, so we will definitely check that. Let's get started. First order of business is to get the speed sensor installed for the governor. We're going to do that on the bell housing over there. First, the only things that I've done to this since the last video was mount the air cleaner, and I did get the alternator hooked up temporarily. So we got this, some 10 gauge wire running from the alternator's output and the ground over to the uh, where the battery is connected to the starter and the block. So we're getting a uh, pretty steady 14.2 volts while running. So that should help the, uh, the EFI to operate more, more efficiently, or at least operate correctly. <laughs> so, all right, well, the uh, speed sensor, the mag pickup, sitting over here, let me grab it, this little guy right here. So this is going to generate an AC waveform that the governor controller detects to ascertain the engine speed. This is going to mount in the bell housing, somewhere in this department, right above the ring gear on the flywheel. So, luckily on this particular bell housing, we've got these three large access plates. They're not all like this. Not all manufacturers are so considerate. Let me get this little screw out. Okay. So, this is really for access to these bolts here on the flywheel. This is the flywheel and then the flex plate for the generator is right here. You can easily access those bolts. Let's get this mag pickup laid out. It's really nice on this engine. Like I said before, we got these gigantic access plates. I don't know if turning this light on is going to help you. So, right. So I've got a line scribed right here. That's about where I want the mag pickup. I want it centered in this hole but over here. So I'm going to take this little ruler, it's nice, it's flexible, and uh, butt it up against the edge of the ring gear. The ring gear is 3 eighths of an inch wide, and I want the mag pick up right in the center of that. So i got to be 3 sixteenths from the edge. And looking at it, it looks like the edge is pretty much exactly 11 sixteenths from this surface here. So we gotta just gotta lay that out. Hopefully I'm not in your way. I don't think I am. So there's eleven sixteenths plus three sixteenths. One, two, three sixteenths. So I want that mag pickup right in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and center, center punch that, and we'll drill it and thread it. We got a uh, pretty beefy casting here. It's uh, probably about 5 sixteenths of an inch worth of cast iron, so plenty of thread engagement. And the mag pickup is 3 eighths 24 thread. So let's get set up to drill it. 
All right, so I'm ready to drill this hole. I've got a couple pieces of masonite here shoved uh, in between the bell housing and the ring gear. There's about a quarter inch gap there, maybe a little bit more, just, uh, just so I don't send the drill bit right into the ring gear itself. Uh, we're gonna pilot drill with a 1 8 bit. Now, in order to get this lined up, we want it square with the crankshaft. Right, we don't want it. We don't want the mag pickup going in like this or like this. So there's a little bit of dead reckoning involved here. You could probably set up a, a jig to guide the drill, but I don't think it's necessary in this case. So I'm going to follow this parting line here, more or less. You see in the block, and then I've got a good uh, line of sight to the crankshaft or the generator rotor shaft. So I'm going to use that to help keep the drill aligned. Just going to use a cordless drill. I may block your view here as I'm drilling. All right, I can see the ring gear. All right, well, I already got the tap started. I just got to get it back, back in there. Okay. That was easy. Just got to chamfer that a little bit, and uh, that'll be it. Well, the mag pickup's installed, and you can just see the tip of it there. I have it run down so that it's sitting right on that ring gear tooth. So you got to run it, thread them in until they're seated, until they're the tip of the mag pickup, which has got a little point right in the center of it. Run that down until it's seated on the top of a tooth. And then back it out three quarter to one turn is uh, usually sufficient for these. And then you're good. All right, well, we're ready for the load test. First official load test. Got the uh, load bank hooked up here. This is a 30 kilowatt load bank. Got the governor set up temporarily. Now I've already pre-tuned this and I, I didn't film any of that. It, to be honest, it was quite the process. Uh, I ran into some issues uh, with stability and uh, response, even with uh, under no load conditions. So after some troubleshooting, I ended up having to add a capacitor. See this little electrolytic capacitor? It's a 10 microfarad. That is soldered to two points right there right there and there and uh... it's that procedure is actually or can be found in the manual for this controller that adjusts what's called the dead time compensation uh... which i'm not going to go into that now because i don't I, I don't know of a easy way to explain that uh... also uh... the new Governor actuator came in, so that's our brand new actuator. And there has been some revisions to the link uh, that I made for the uh, throttle. This is the actually the third iteration. The first one you saw, there was a second one, this is the third. So this is actually giving me pretty good response up to this point. But the load test is going to reveal uh, how well it actually does. So speaking of that, we're actually going to start this up uh, and go right to rated speed. So the engine is cold, it hasn't been run in a few days. So the, the uh, fuel injection, the ECM for that is energized right now and it's fully primed up. 
I'm going to switch the governor on and then we're going to go over and crank the engine. Uh, as soon as the engine fires up, uh, after a short delay, well, as soon as the engine fires up and the governor detects a speed signal from our mag pickup there, uh, it's going to begin ramping the engine up to, or the generator, up to rated speed. So I've got the speed ramping. See that there? I have that set at uh, roughly three seconds. Three to four seconds uh, from no governor action to rated speed. And uh, it should make voltage. The voltage regulator is connected. And then we can uh, we'll let it warm up a little bit, make sure we got good governor stability, and we'll start applying some load. So uh, let's see. I think I'll put you on the tripod for the first startup. That way I can be over with the generator without a uh, camera in my hand. Don't have much time today, and it's threatening to rain any minute now. Not any minute, but you know what I mean. Okay. Governor is on. I'm going to keep my hand on the throttle here. Not on the throttle, but in the vicinity in case uh, it wants to do anything crazy. I can control the speed. So here we go. Hmm, that's interesting. So it went right to full throttle, and it didn't start. Hmm, let's turn the governor off. Uh, if I'm going to turn the governor off, I'm going to need to disconnect the uh, voltage regulator. Stand by. So instead of disconnecting the voltage regulator, I've turned the governor off. So I'm going to try to start it again. Uh, with no governor action. As soon as it fires, I'm going to walk over and turn the governor on. I don't know if the Holly uh, will start with the throttle wide open. Let's try this again. to turn that up. So that seemed to work pretty well. I can experiment some more with that, but uh, I have a feeling the Holly's not going to want to start at wide open throttle. Which is just fine. I can, uh, let's see, when I program the controller, That's interesting. I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. Because the pre-start output I can utilize to wake up the ECU and power that. The run output, which would supply the ignition and the governor, would need to come on before the engine starts cranking. I have this, so I have the starting fuel turned all the way down. But even so, 
when the governor sees that low mag pickup input frequency, it, it's going to try to ramp it up as hard as it can. Man, you know, even at rated speed, this thing's quiet. I tell you what, there's something to these spark ignition engines. They're nice and smooth. battery voltage is correct. Yeah, see our throttle position is at 11%. That's uh, to maintain 1800 RPM, no load. And you can see the governor is barely extended. Cooling temp. Uh, 148 already. All right. Yep. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes to warm up, and then we'll start putting some load on it, bouncing that governor around. Oh yeah, let's see where we're at speed-wise. around a little bit. ever so slightly. Alright, let's turn the load bank on. Sometimes I gotta rock this thing a little bit to get the uh, the air switch to pick up. All of our fans are running, right? Yep. All right, we're ready to put some load on it now. Got a little meter here. Let's start out with something light, like three kilowatt. Twelve amps. I didn't really hear any, anything change. I'm going to zoom in on that throttle linkage. Alright, let's put that 3 kilowatt on. hear it. Let's try something heavier like 6 kilowatt. Yeah. set you up on the tripod and have you watch that governor.
So what do we got now? We got six kilowatts on it, about 24 amps. Take that off. See it? It, it finds its home again. It cycles back and forth a little bit. Let's try throwing nine on it. That's 36 amps. Nine is off. I have a 18. Let's just throw 18 on it. Okay. bit more gentle with it. Throw 12 on it. That's 60 amps. I noticed the voltage kind of sagged a little bit. Yeah, we sagged down to 228. Might have to bring that stability up a little bit. Or the gain, rather. On the regulator, I mean. We are at 60.4, 60.4, 60.5, 60 dancing around there a little bit. That's pretty respectable. I'm going to drop that. Let it run no load and check our stability. Alright, well I've made some adjustments to the regulator, the voltage regulator. Let's see well, where we're at no load. No load, we're at 240. Let's put some load on it, make sure we hold there. Let's go to a 9 kilowatt. No load. And nine kilowatt. Okay. Let's go to eighteen. Put another nine on there. Very nice. Very nice. No load. All right. Now let's see about that frequency. All right, we are at no load, still bouncing around a little bit. Let's see how it responds. All right, nine kilowatt. Eighteen kilowatt. No kilowatt. Let's throw eighteen on it in one shot. Yeah, not too bad. Oh, my meter clicked off. Wake up. Yeah, 76 amps. All right, well, it's a 30 kilowatt gen set. We're only about halfway there. Let's give it some more juice. All right, that is 100 amps, which uh, 18 plus 6. Doing all right. Let's see where our throttle position is at. Yeah, so we're only at 26% uh, throttle on the uh, Holly. Oh, what's our temp? 181. That's pretty good. Alright, yeah, so 24 kilowatt right now. She's uh, humming right along. Let's go to 27. 
we are at 112 amps, 60.4 hertz, 242. Alright, now let's drop all that in one shot. It's going to be kind of hard to do with one hand. I should have been zoomed in on the throttle for that. Put 24 kilowatt on it in one shot. And drop. Man, this thing is smooth. <laughs> I can't get over how nice and quiet that engine is. Work on so many old mechanical diesels. Forget how uh, how nice and smooth the gas engine can be. All right, let's just put 18 on it. So 18 kilowatts. So what can I put on it? I could put what nine more on it. All right, so you got 18 kilowatts running in your house. So what's that? You got all the lights on, you're cooking dinner in the oven, Thanksgiving dinner, and the hot water heater's running. Sorry, water heater. Water heater's running. Assuming you got electric water heat, uh, hot water. And then the air conditioner comes on. Let's put another nine on it. All right. So that's, what's that, 27 kilowatt? We are at 112 amps, so I can go full 30, but I gotta turn this guy up. That is full 30 kilowatt, 125 amps. Let's see where our throttle position's at. Only 33% on the throttle position. That's impressive. I'm, I'm starting to smell the paint burning off of that exhaust manifold. Or curing, I should say. Realistic load. 24 kilowatt. I'm hearing something rattling. C-clamp. That C-clamp is holding up this muffler support. Ah, fuel pressure. We didn't even bother to look at that. Sixty pounds. That's appropriate. I'm happy with it. What's our uh, AFR? Bouncing around between 13.1 and 13.6. That's a little on the rich side, but we can probably improve that. Anyway, we still haven't optimized uh, ignition timing yet. We can still see some improvements. the load a little bit. Alright, so 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom you in on the frequency. Like I said, we're still bouncing around a little bit. from like 60.3 to 60.6 there it goes right there it's not that bad and that's what nine kilowatts of load let's take all the load off all right that's no load see it kind of hunts a little bit there kind of hunts a little bit but it finds its home again Alright, so let's say it's nighttime. You got some standby loads. We got three kilowatt on it. And uh, let's say you got a big air conditioner that has a starting current of, well, what's that? We'll put 24. We'll jump 24 kilowatts on it and hold it there. Let's see what it does. What did you see? Dropped to 57 before recovering. All right, let's drop that back off. You know, because starting current's one thing. I can't, I can't simulate, you know, the the inrush of an inductive load like a large motor here. So let's see. I'm gonna put that 24 back on it, and then a second later, I'm gonna drop. I'm going to drop 12 off of it. That wasn't too bad. Let's put it all back on. That is 30 kilowatt, 125, 124.6 amps. I'm liking it. I'm glad the sun came out. You know, I haven't seen that paint in the sun before. pretty good. It's our oil pressure. About 45 pounds. The oil should be full. You have to temp down. Yep, we're hot. Engine temps should still be fine. Not breaking a sweat. bit of heat in my conductors here. We're at 75 amps. All right, let's drop the load. All right. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that to the point where I can, I'm confident that I can build the rest of the control system. Make the wiring harness up, nice. Mount the genset controller, mount the governor in there. Do all that up, tidy all that up. Then we can come back and do some fine tuning. I hope you found that interesting.
Thanks for watching.